Dogs have been man's best friend for over 2,000 years. These natural companions have worked their way from farms and fields into their owners' hearts and homes, trading in wild scavenging for tame table scraps. But what did we feed dogs in the days before cans and kibble? Mostly, dogs ate what we ate, along with whatever raw prey they found outside. Medieval royal hounds lived in posh kennels and were fed stews complete with the lungs, livers, and hearts of various animals, plus grains and vegetables. They ate like kings. At this time, it was difficult to feed yourself, let alone a pet. Domesticated dogs became a symbol of status, and the lower class started repurposing horse meat to sell as dog food to wealthy dog owners. As dogs became part of the family, owners began paying more attention to dog food and pet health became a priority. In 1895, veterinary medicine was officially founded in the United States. This brought some self-proclaimed experts into the public eye, claiming that only uncivilized dogs would eat raw meat. This mentality gained strength just as alternatives became available. James Spratt launched a brilliant marketing campaign for his baked dog biscuits. The convenience of tasty biscuits with a long shelf life was an instant success. Others followed in Spratt's footsteps, mass producing cheap and easy pet food for the commercial market. By 1930, canned pet food became the most popular option on the shelves. Made of horse meat, carefully marketed as lean red meat, canned food was stamped with a seal of government approval and by 1941, producers were breeding horses just for dog food. That was until December of 1941, when the U.S. entered World War II. Strict rations on tin forced the pet food industry to get creative. Borrowing from another food trend, cereal, where ingredients are pushed through a tube, cooked under high pressure, then puffed up with air, keeping them crisp. Purina's pet food division borrowed an extruder from the cereal division and experimented with it in secret. The result, dog chow. Dogs loved the crunch, it seemed to digest well, and quickly became the number one dog food in the nation. Though World War II was over, the aggressive marketing war on raw meat had just begun. Lobbyists launched a series of ad campaigns to convince consumers that commercially prepared dog food was their only option. Some sponsored reports even talked about the dangers of table scraps and feeding the dogs raw meat. The marketing campaign triumphed at crowning Kibble the King. Today, manufactured dog food is a huge part of the $29 billion pet food industry. That industry is still growing. But what's happening to our dog's health? We're seeing what the convenient modern diet is doing to humans. What effects are GMO corn, wheat, soy, and non-digestible fillers having on our dogs? The concept of kibble has only been around for less than 89 years, and yet the benefits of raw meat are backed up by science and history. If you line up the results of the pet food industry and dog health and wellness side by side, you can't help but wonder if we were feeding our dogs the right way before history took its toll. How to make homemade dog food. Feeding your pup homemade dog food gives you control over exactly what your dog eats and allows you to customize food for picky eaters, sensitive stomachs, allergies, and medical issues. Making food at home also guarantees there are no fillers or unnecessary ingredients in Fido's bowl, and this will make for a happy and healthy pup. Homemade dog food might be easier to make than you think, and you'll probably be amazed by the variety of foods a dog can eat. However, there are also lots of foods that your canine companion cannot and should not eat, and it's also important to make sure that the food you make is balanced and provides all the nutrients your pet requires. Making basic dog food. Gather your supplies. For this recipe, you'll need your ingredients, a large stockpot, a large spoon, and an airtight storage container for leftovers. wh.performance.mark Step 1 underscore rendered. Make your eggshell powder. Calcium is an important part of a dog's diet, and one of the best sources is eggshells. Most dogs can't tolerate lactose, and it's not a good idea to feed them dairy products from a cow. Clean and dry out the shells from 12 eggs. Spread them on a baking sheet and bake in a 300F oven for 5 to 7 minutes. Remove from the oven and allow to cool. Grind to a fine powder in a coffee grinder, about 1 minute. Store in an airtight container for up to 2 months, 1.
Get the rice and oats boiling. In a large stockpot, combine rice, water, and oats. Bring to a boil over medium-high heat. Add the remaining ingredients. For the vegetable portion of the recipe, there are many vegetables that you can use or mix that will be good for your dog, including peas and carrots, broccoli and cauliflower, apples, beets, cabbage, spinach and other dark leafy greens. Turn down the heat and continue cooking. Cook this for 20 to 25 minutes, until all the liquid has been absorbed and the vegetables are soft. Allow the food to cool. Don't put it away until it has reached room temperature. Once it has, transfer it to an airtight container and store in the refrigerator for up to a week. For longer term storage, divide the mixture into individual portions and transfer each to a separate container. Store them in the freezer and thaw portions as needed. How to care for a Shih Tzu puppy. Originally bred by the Chinese nobility as far back as 629 AD, the Shih Tzu is now a popular dog across the world as a devoted and enthusiastic companion. 1. Adopting or purchasing a new Shih Tzu puppy is an alluring and exciting prospect, but you should know some basic principles and guidelines for caring for this toy breed before you take one into your home. Learn how much exercise you should be prepared to give your new pup, as well as what kind of food, bedding, grooming provisions, and training you'll need to provide. Preparing a safe and welcoming household. Puppy proof your home. Your new Shih Tzu will be a curious little canine with no sense of boundaries, so you'll have to make sure your home is an appropriate and safe place for such a playful and inquisitive new inhabitant. Place all shoes and chewable items out of reach, install locks on cabinets containing harmful household chemicals, and bundle up and remove any exposed cords which could look like tempting chew toys. Also, ask that everyone in the house keep closet and outer doors closed when your new dog arrives so that it can't get into any mischief or accidentally escape your home. You might know to keep bags of dog kibble tucked into locked cabinets or bins, but don't forget that dogs, and especially puppies, are attracted to people foods as well. Don't leave half-eaten bags of chips or candy out, and make sure that all kitchen items are stored out of reach from your canine companion. Dried fruit, chocolate, and allium vegetables like onions and garlic are particularly harmful to dogs, so be especially careful with these items. 3. Purchase a crate and bedding. Your new puppy needs a crate for many reasons. First of all, it will present them with a warm, safe den, which they can retreat to when feeling tired, overwhelmed, or anxious. Secondly, it will help you to potty train a breed known for being somewhat difficult when it comes to housebreaking. You should select a well-ventilated crate big enough to allow your dog to stand up, turn around, and lay down when it reaches full, adult size. For an average Shih Tzu, expect an adult height of 8 to 11 inches to the shoulder and weight of 9 to 16 pounds. 5. Never leave a puppy younger than 6 months old in the crate for more than 3 to 4 hours at a time, and don't ever use the crate as punishment. If you do, the puppy will associate the crate with negative emotions and will no longer perceive it as a restful, secure space. 6. Buy stainless steel food and water dishes. You should have food and water available to your new puppy the minute it enters the home, so make sure you purchase a set of dog bowls ahead of time. While you can find any number of ceramic or stoneware bowls on the market, stainless steel is your best option. It's dishwasher safe, durable, and untainted with any lead-based paints or glazes. When you first bring your puppy home, you might want to feed it the food its shelter or breeder was feeding in order to ease the transition. Stock your home with chew toys. Shih Tzu puppies can go through particularly rough teething periods, so you'll want to make this temporary phase as painless and damage-free as possible. Provide plenty of hard rubber toys so that your dog won't take its teething frustration out on furniture and household items, and purchase special freezable toys in order to alleviate the pain of swollen gums. Avoid chewables like rawhide and bones, as these can splinter and be swallowed by your hapless pup. Make sure you have an appropriately sized collar and leash. Even at full size, your Shih Tzu won't be powerful enough to break away from an average leash, but you should still make sure that your walking supplies are sturdy and safe. Measure your puppy's neck and get a collar which can be adjusted as the dog grows. Avoid choke chains and collars with rings or other details which could snag on your puppy's teeth and present a choking hazard. Contact your breeder or shelter about your new puppy's background. Whether you're adopting from a shelter or purchasing from a breeder or pet store, you should obtain the proper records verifying your dog's health, history, and any other relevant documentation like spay, neuter certification. You should also ask a shelter or store employee for any behavioral issues or history of abuse which could impact how you bring the animal into your home. 
For example, if you find out from the shelter that your puppy had a bad experience in an abusive or otherwise volatile foster home, you should take special pains to make your puppy's transition peaceful and low-key. Keep music and household traffic to a minimum, and make sure your puppy's crate sits in a dark room removed from outside disruptions and noise. 